This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete Haynes online manual at haynes.com. Place chocks each side of the rear wheel, diagonally opposite to the one being removed. Using the tool included in the vehicle toolkit, pull the wheel centre trim from place. Using the special anti-theft wheel bolt tool where necessary, slacken each of the wheel bolts half a turn. Position the jack head under the rubber block situated under the front door sill, then raise the vehicle until the wheel is clear of the ground. Position an axle stand under the rear of the front subframe to support the vehicle. Fully unscrew the bolts and remove the wheel. Push the piston into its bore by levering the caliper outwards a little. Using a flat-bladed screwdriver, prise off the caliper retaining spring. Prise out the plastic caps, then using an Allen key or bit, slacken and remove the upper and lower guide pins. Slide off the caliper and pull the inner brake pad from the piston. Suspend the caliper from the strut using wire to prevent straining the brake hose. Price the outer brake pad from the caliper mounting bracket. Measure the thickness of the brake pad friction material. If any pad is worn down to 3mm or less, all four front pads must be renewed. Using aerosol brake cleaner and a brush, remove any dust or dirt from the mounting bracket and the caliper. Clean the guide pins, apply a little brake assembly grease and check they slide easily in the caliper. If new pads are to be fitted, the piston must be pushed fully back into the caliper body. To prevent any dirt particles being pushed up into the hydraulic circuit, clamp off the flexible brake hose leading to the caliper, then connect a brake bleeding kit to the caliper bleed screw. Open the bleed screw as the piston is retracted. The surplus brake fluid will then be collected in the bleed kit vessel. Push the piston fully back into the caliper using a retraction tool or G-clamp. Close the bleed screw just before the caliper piston is pushed fully into the caliper. This should ensure no air enters the hydraulic system. Disconnect the bleeding kit, close the bleed screw and remove the retraction tool. Refit the rubber cap to the bleed screw and remove the hose clamp. Slide the outer brake pad into place on the mounting bracket, ensuring the friction material is against the disc face. Clip the inner pad into the piston, then slide the caliper into place in the mounting bracket. Press the caliper into position, then install the guide pins, tightening them to the specified torque. Refit the plastic caps. Insert the ends of the retaining spring into the holes in the caliper, then use the screwdriver to force the spring into position on the mounting bracket. Repeatedly depress the brake pedal to bring the pads into full contact with the disc. Repeat this procedure on the remaining front brake. Locate the wheel over the hub, then insert and lightly tighten the retaining bolts. Remove the axle stand and lower the vehicle to the ground. Tighten the wheel bolts to the specified torque.
Refit the wheel center trim and remove the wheel chocks. Open the driver's door and pull the bonnet release handle. Depress the safety catch and lift the bonnet. The brake and clutch fluid reservoir is located at the rear of the engine compartment. The max and min marks are indicated on the side of the reservoir. The fluid level must be kept between the marks at all times. If topping up is necessary, clean around the top of the reservoir, then unscrew the filler cap. Add new DOT4 fluid from a sealed container to bring the level up to the max mark. Mop up any spilled fluid and securely refit the filler cap. Firmly lower the bonnet and check it securely locked.